Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Fish of Hex. My name is Travis. Today's video, as promised, is to show you guys the two different versions of filter sock holders that I have here that I make with a 3D printer. Um, I use them specifically to remove detritus in my 40 gallon and the 300 because I'm no longer able to do water changes. And I guess I can briefly uh, explain that. Uh, so basically with all the coral that I ship out, it equates to about 70 gallons worth of water. So in every little bag, all those bags added up every month is about 70 gallons of fresh water that I have to dump into the system, which is fine, but that's pretty much my 50 gallon water change and some that I usually do every month. So because I'm struggling to keep my nutrients elevated and it's just like a daily thing for me, with all that water coming in and out, doing an additional 50 gallon water change every month just to remove detritus is not really an option for me at this moment, just because it's not going to fix the issue. It's going to make it worse. So I decided to create these filter sock holders, which uh, can sit on a regular tank, like your DIY tanks that you get at Home Depot. You guys make all those sumps and stuff, not DIY tanks, but using those dollar per gallon tanks to make sumps. Uh, these can fit right on the rim. It can be screwed down to height to hold it but for me particularly i like to put it on a 50 gallon or 50 gallon a five gallon bucket get all my numbers jacked up today um it's been a long couple days trust me i just got done cutting up that red montipora and boy did that take like four days a ton of frags and a ton of work and uh, i'll show you guys a video on that tomorrow but anyway i will put this on the side of a five gallon bucket throw the filter sock in here and uh, basically use it to collect the detritus from the tank and then dump the water back into the tank and keep doing that. Now, I recommend getting these for people who have dyno as well. So if you don't already have filter socks in your system, getting one of these is gonna work because you can manu manually remove and siphon dyno out every single day into a filter sock. And it's going to help fix the issue a little bit sooner. Now, just a heads up, I have to give you a little disclaimer here. Uh, if you're gonna order something 3D printed, I have about 40 orders in, in queue right now. So you're probably gonna get it in a couple weeks. Um, I have four printers, no room for any more printers, and that's just kind of, that's where we're at, and there's not much I can do about it, so I want to give you guys a heads up. If you're looking to get one right now, like the next, this week, it's probably not going to happen. You're going to have to wait a couple weeks for it to be printed. But uh, anyway, let's go ahead and move over to the 40-gallon. Let me get the gel filter on so it's not so blue, and uh, we'll start siphoning some, uh, some detritus out. Okay, to set this up is pretty simple. Just go ahead and uh, put it on the side and screw it down. Uh, the hardest part about building one of these was the screw, getting it perfect so it, it, it uh, threaded correctly and everything worked out. So it just puts a little bit of pressure on there. Can't go anywhere. Then go ahead and put the uh, filter sock in and you're good to go. So let's, uh, let's move on to the other camera. So I actually forgot to uh, turn off my ATO, so I have to start this portion of the video over. Uh, it was kicking on, and well, that's not going to work out. So make sure you turn your ATO off if you're going to do this, or at least turn your return pump off. Anyway, I'm going to show you how to start a siphon without having to put your suck holder on the tube. It's uh, actually not that hard. Uh, Brian Norris is the one who showed me how to do it. Uh, you're going to put the uh, siphoning in, or the sucking in, hose end, in the water, and then put the uh, output down, and you're going to lift up start it and here we go and we get over here and start cycling a little bit now this uh, particular um, tube pulls out a lot of water quickly so I don't have much time if I'm gonna have to fill up this five gallon bucket so let's get in here and remove what I can suck up all this coral unfortunately Cleanup crew as well, I suppose. Have to fish through that afterward and get them out. All right, I'm getting full, so I'm going to stop. And unfortunately, if you want to get the uh, water out of the tube, you can either elevate it or you can blow on it. So right there, I'm um, going to take the filter sock out real quick. And you can see it collect all that gel. Set it to the side or you can hear it dripping, and then pour the water back in to the display. And you can repeat this process as many times as you want to get the detritus out. What I'm gonna do is probably uh, turn the power heads on, try to blow around that detritus a little bit, then come in here and do it again throughout the day. It just depends on what else I got going on, but that's good for now, you guys get the point. And uh, yeah, so pretty simple and again I do this on the 300 when I need to which I'm gonna do a little bit later uh, definitely have a lot uh, let me show you guys there's tons of detritus underneath this guy this is where it gets kicked up and blown around so not gonna show you what the tank looks like yet 
with the uh, Monty gone, but I will show you that there's a lot of Monty over there. So uh, yeah, a lot of work ahead to get everything done, but that's about it for this video. Uh, you guys get the point, and uh, it's really easy. Get some detritus out. Okay. I didn't really have to do a water change, not technically a water change. And uh, yeah, so if you're interested, check out the uh, website fishofhex.com. Understand there is a delay, but I do appreciate the support. All right, so that's about it. I'll see you guys later. Peace.